All right, straight into this one. Been asked several questions by several re resounding questions that keep coming up about chain tension. People are asking, new riders this is, why do I have to tension my chain? Why can't I just make it tight? Why must it be a specific tension in the manual? I don't understand it, it doesn't make sense. Well, if you think about it, it kind of doesn't because you're thinking of an axle at the front, an axle at the back and the thing swivels up and down on the swing arm. Why does it need this specific slack? What's all that about? I'll show you, I've got a model, here we go. Made this up last night, didn't take a minute, there you go. Cardboard sprockets, cardboard swing and arm. Okay, probably wouldn't be robust on a bike, and it wouldn't be very good in the wet. Okay, <laughs> bit of paracord between represents the chain, and it's as simple as this. What a lot of it seems the questions, the people answering the questions have missed is this pivot issue here. It's a, it's a, a principle of physics. If your front sprocket was here at the front of the swing and arm, like that, then indeed your chain would be the same tension all the time and you could run it as tight as you like pretty much okay if on the other hand as it is your front sprocket always sits way in front of the swing arm pivot point probably on the bandit by the look of it there it's a good six it's not much about six seven inches in front so we've done it scaled it down so because it sits in front watch what happens as this swing arm moves in an arc naturally the arc brings that axle closer in towards that one which is fixed and that naturally creates unnecessary dangerous slack it's as simple as that so when your bike manual suggests to tension your chain that's about where it normally sits with the chain just above the swing arm on top and then you have that inch and a half to two inch when it sits there that's so that when it bumps up and down it doesn't go any tighter because that's the tightest point isn't it when they're all in a line that's the tightest point and that's over a bump with luggage and a girlfriend on the back that when it goes over a bump perhaps it lifts over a bridge then it drops all that slack. It's very, very simple when you kind of see it laid out in a model. That's the principle, and that's why you must have that little bit of slack. It's absolutely vital. If you have a Harley Davidson, it has a rubber belt, and it's important that that rubber belt is tensioned correctly, more so than the chain of sprockets, in fact. If you're going to jack your Harley Davidson up and make some sort of custom bike out of it, like a flat track racer or something, then you're going to do this with a swing arm. You're going to create unnecessary and, in fact, unacceptable slack in the belt, so it's important to fit chain of sprockets if you're going to jack your Harley up. Most, most uh, cruiser bikes are very low and their three axles sit in a, in a row and that makes them very straightforward. Like I said, the consequences of over tightening your chain are very severe indeed. You can crush the bearing inside this front axle output shaft. Once that gets crushed, if it collapses, the axle goes out of line. That means all the cogs and synchros inside the transmission all go out of line with each other, all collide with each other and destroy each other. It's pretty messy. I've seen it happen. So obviously, keep the tension correct. It's very, very straightforward. And it pen. Does yep. that make sense? I got it. You see it there, can't you? Yep. That's why you do it. It's the principle of this pivot point being distance from that one. That's why you must do it. Do you like my model? I like my model. I'm going to hang it on the wall like that. Go on then. The Wiz Garage Model Gallery. It's like something from Take Heart, isn't it? Remember that? Okay. Take it easy ride safe. I hope that helps you out. See you next time.